What's up, what's up, what's up, it's your boy DMO Dom Muto, we're back with another video today, we're watching Call Me RJ, today we're watching, um, Ultra Vegeta Becomes an Android, so last time we left off, uh, Vegeta killed the two angels, and one move, pulled up on, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jiro, ah, I'm tripping, Dr. Jiro, Jiro, I'm tripping, I couldn't say that loud, anyway, but yeah, so we're gonna get into it, man. Story continues with Dr. Jero having just entered his lab in the hopes of activating 17 and 18 to defeat the Z Fighters, but only to find shockingly Ultra Vegito standing there, who of course is a complete stranger to the esteemed scientist. Not but with a shocked is. face, Vegito suddenly begins to realize who it is he is looking at and yells out, Wait a minute, I know you. Dr. Jero! Is that you? Where... Where am I? To which Dr. Jero reacts... What? And he too knows who I am. How does every one of Goku's friends and this complete stranger know of my existence just by appearance alone? You this understand? makes no sense. Wait! But suddenly, in Dr. Jero's Time rush travel. to try and rationalize what is happening and who this is, he thinks, No, that hair. Is this a Saiyan? It's not Vegeta. Could this be Raditz or Nappa? My data should have all the information needed if that's the case. But that still wouldn't explain how he's in my lab. Computer, show me who this is. Instantly activating get, the electronics get, built into his left eye, the same technology Android 19 originally used to detect Yamcha. I like this call, Unfortunately, as the machine reads Ultra Vegito's face and body under a red hue, nothing at all seems to come up, not even a trace of history. Which isn't surprising, considering at this point in the Dragon Ball Z timeline, Vegeta and Goku had never, never heard of the Patara earrings yeah. or even considered fusion. Yep. Leaving Dr. Jero to mutter, Damn it! How can this be? He's not in any of the data records, not even the backups. I prepared for this day for too long. I can't let this intruder ruin 17 and 18's launch. And with that, Dr. Jero quickly looks to his right instantly seeing 17 and 18's idle chambers, right next to the open casket of the late 19. As Dr. Jero thinks, Damn. still not giving away anything, there's no more time to set any readjustments or calibrations. I have to just hope my previous work still stands the test of time. It I ain't. need to release them now. <laughs> but annoyance soon comes back to Dr. Jero's face as he realizes the rushed and dangerous predicament he unexpectedly is now in. Grumbling, this is ridiculous. First Piccolo, Vegeta, and the others instantly know of us androids, and the exact time and location of our arrival. And now, be, in my hey, very own lab, an unknown be surprised how they found out. appears. This is far too many unexpected variables. But in a flash, Dr. Jero begins moving at super speed. In his head, thinking he has got some head start as he thinks, Whoever this is, he didn't destroy 17 or 18. There's no reason to think he's strong. As long as I get to my creations in time, everything will go as planned. And just like that, faster than you've ever seen an old man move, Dr. Jero taps quickly the buttons for Android 18 and then swiftly Android 17. Letting out, yes, yes, I did it, it's done! As slowly, Android 18's capsule begins to open and Android 17's follows with his eyes opening for the first time in years. Oh shit. <gasps> Those are... And suddenly, even to Vegito, memories begin to come back, with Android 17 and 18 being far more familiar to him than Dr. Jero. Having fought alongside 17 in the Tournament of Power, yep. and 18 being the now wife of the late Krillin. 
He sees them and thinks. Not, oh yeah, the late clear. I forgot Chris died. Moment. Damn. This is the moment Android 17 and 18 were activated. So that means outside are. But as Vegito thinks, 17 walks out commenting. Wow. It's been a while, Doctor. Thank you for waking me. As 18 also steps forward and concurs. Yes, Doctor. It's such a pleasure to see you again. I see you two have joined us in becoming an android. Yeah. What? Dr. Jero, hearing this cordiality and politeness, is left in a state of brief disbelief. Caffeine, though. Since the last time they were ever activated, he needed to immediately deactivate them for their rebelling nature. And replies, Amazing. Did I just hear you thank me? The personality reprogramming must have completed after all. This is just how I envisioned you to finally be my two greatest creations. 17 and 18! As the two twin androids now stand together, silent and coldly, reminiscent of the deadly, unbelievably powerful killers they once were. Before 17 replies, Of course, Doctor. You created us after all. I would never doubt your genius oh, yeah. to produce perfection. Oh, yeah, they can't. Isn't oh, that yeah. right, oh, yeah. He trying to, they, they, they kind of pour the wool over your eyes. Frankly adds, yes, 17. How could we ever pay our dear creator for giving us life? Chop your the head off. The fakeness in their voices, however, is obvious to any of us OG Dragon Ball Z yes, fans. Sir. As 18 ups it a gear, femininely beginning to touch her hair, thinking on the inside, this old freak has gone and made himself an android. But it seems he skimped on giving himself the kind of technology Seventeen and I have. What a foolish mistake. Now all we have to do is get rid of him, and we will never need to be put to sleep again. Eighteen with now an inviting smile, then approaches closer to Dr. Shiro, with the doctor asking, Huh? What is it, Eighteen? Is there something wrong with your programming? To which 18 replies, No, everything is fine, Doctor. I feel better than ever. Oh, we shit. just want to know what our first mission for you is. You want us to kill Son Goku, don't you? We can do that, right, 17? To which her brother with a more sinister smirk lets out, That will be no problem, Doctor. We know from our databanks for how oh, long yeah, that Saiyan has troubled here. you. Destroying your army and foiling your plans countless times. But with these upgrades you've given us, it'll be no problem. Damn. My calculations suggest we're at least 50 to 60 times. <sighs> My arm! But suddenly, interrupting 17 and 18 from the shadows of the dark cave is Ultra Vegito. Who has been standing there this entire time, yeah, you've been, but seemingly you've been undetected back, by the android as he uncontrollably yells out due to his still raw injury. In a gruesome display, the very veins of Vegito's stump begin to bulge as blood spurts out. And as he looks at it, he can only think, Damn it! I was hoping to have arrived back in a timeline that was in peace, closer to Bulma, so I could find the Dragon Balls. What a drag. This is just wasting my time. Yeah. Wait! But suddenly, a thought pops into Ultra Vegito's mind. He realizes where he is and what exactly can be done. As he continues, Doctor, Doctor Jero! Yeah. I'm in the presence of a doctor and complaining about a severed arm? How can I be so stupid? There's no I mean, you are Goku. I can get this old geezer to do for me. To this day, no one has even come close to making beings as advanced as 17 or 18. 17 even won the Tournament of Power! Huh? Definitely did. Who the hell is that? Definitely did. Well, Vegito's did. initial outburst does not go unnoticed by the she now aware keep up with Super Blue. and Blue. As 17 I mean, continues, keep up with Super Doctor, this man does not appear in any of my data records. Is he one of Goku's friends? 18. Any luck on your end? To which 18 also looks at Vegito and replies, No, not even a trace in my records. His eyes aren't too different to ours. 
Could he be another android doctor? We thought you stopped after 19's model. Uh, I could be an android! But suddenly after hearing Android 18's assumption, an even greater idea than before comes to Vegito he as he continues. Of course, 17 and 18 began as humans. They did. Dr. Giro is the one who modified them into what they are now. So Dr. Giro could make me a new arm. What? An arm like 17's. One that gave me infinite energy. But as Vegito introspectively gets extremely excited by the possibilities of what Dr. Giro could possibly add to his arsenal, the Doctor meanwhile, hearing what his creations have said, instead responds, No, he is not one of my creations, 18. He's either a human or a Saiyan. But regardless, he should be no match for either of you. Your first task is to annihilate him, quickly and silently. I don't want to alarm the rest of Goku's friends who are looking for me outside. Dr. Jiro then looks to Android 17 and continues, 17, I programmed you as the more powerful of the two of you. It may be overkill, but handle our enemy over here now. And when you're done, you and 18 can finish the rest of the Earthlings outside. Which brings a smirk to 17's face as he lets back out, Certainly, Doctor. Whatever you wish is my command. Oh, shit. I'll do it just as you said. Quickly and quietly. I will get rid of our enemy. As curiously, 17 as he says this, then changes his sight to Dr. Jero, moving behind him, also in a very familiar scene to us fans. We definitely. As Dr. Jero reacts, Huh? What are you doing, 17? He's over there. I command you. Follow your orders and execute that your targets. That nigga ain't worried about Vegito. Android worried 17 about you. says, Gladly, old man. It's your turn to be put to sleep. <laughs> As just like in the original Dragon Ball Z timeline, Android 17 launches a kick meant to assassinate his creator, Dr. Jiro. What? But unbelievably, changing the entire course of history once again, Ultra Vegito appears in the nick of time to block Android 17's kick, shocking all involved. With Dr. Giro commenting, 17? What were you trying to do? Were you trying to kill me, you brat? I gave life to you! While 17, who's more alarmed at just how easily he was stopped, inquires, What? 18. Who is this guy? There's no way anyone on this planet should be able to stop me so easily. That felt like hitting an immovable object. But looking coldly down at the teen android, you don't know who you're fucking with, boy. This is him. Vegito says, Not today, Tin Can. As much as I'm a fan of rebelling against authority, you'll do nothing until I'm done with him first. Got it? After which, Ultra Vegito turns his head to Dr. Giro and shockingly lets out, You! Listen carefully and listen good. I need a new arm. And you're going to make me one. You're going to make me a damn android! Huh? What? <gasps> make him an android? What the hell is going on here? as all three cyborgs lay completely shell-shocked and surprised by this seriously unexpected request. Just what will Ultra Vegito hope to gain by this new cybernetic arm? That's yeah, Android awesome. Vegito. But that was it for today's video, guys. And if you made it this far, leave me a hashtag. Well, that was a cool little chat, a cool little chat, a little, cool little fill art right there. I like that, I like that. Uh, yeah, Vegito become an android. With infinite energy on his arm. Oh, okay. Not a bad idea. I like the right. I like. I love the right. Call me RJ. So, <laughs> good shit. Good shit. So anyway, uh, if you like my reaction? Make sure like, comment, subscribe. Check out the last chapter right here. Check out another video right here. Uh, and I catch you next time. Peace.